Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're gathered today on the seventh of the third month, which of our Creator's calendar as we reckon it, which happens to line up with the 20th of May, 2023, on their Gregorian calendar. And we're taking a little segue to make sure the recording picks up. Last week we had technical difficulties, but we want to cover what it is it, that we're supposed to do and to think on on the Sabbath. This is something that's from what's called the Apostolic Constitutions, and it covers that fairly well. So without further ado, we'll just get into it. <clears throat> this is from Matith Yahu, or Matthew chapter 12, verse 8. It says, For the son of Adam is master of the Sabbath. And that's what this is all about. He's the master of the millennial reign, which is what the Sabbath is a type and picture of. And the more we can get that in our mind, the better off it'll be. So this is from a Facebook post from a few years ago. It says, I have found this to be very profitable reading and thinking on on Shabbat. Did you know that Yahuwah's Yom or day is the Sabbath? This is falsely named the day of the Lord and wrongly believed to be the first day of the week, when in reality it is the seventh. It is the most important and often, or sorry, and most often rehearsed appointed time, and it is a foreshadow of the millennial reign. And the text that we're going to cover today is from Book 7 of the Apostolic Constitutions, starting on Chapter 30. And the title is How We Ought to Assemble Together and to Celebrate the Festival Day of Our Deliverer's Resurrection, which is the Sabbath. Now, just a, just a little cravat here, or cravat. The Apostolic Constitutions, every version that we have or every translation that we have in English is either from the original... Greek and Latin translation from a Jesuit in the 1560s, I believe, or the Ethiopian translation from, from the uh, Ethiopian Giza. And of those two, both of them had been tampered with, so neither one of them are fully accurate, right? Whether it was time, inclination, for a variety of means, we know that the enemy was able to do things to the truth because it's written right and we have the history to prove it but point being the days that are mentioned for when he walked out the things of his passion are not always accurate in these versions especially in the common scriptures or elsewhere but when you look at the information about the calendar that is prevalent and in abundance throughout what is called the dead sea scrolls the number one connecting theme of all of the scrolls that were found is the calendar. And when you look at what's in there about the calendar, the festival days were specific, specific to the day and week, and were unchanging forever. The 14th day of the first month is always the third day of the week, without fail, always and forever. And the same is true for every appointed time. And when you have that in mind, and the fact that he literally walked out these appointed times with what he was foretold to do, and what it mentioned, the rule, the whole reason they were created was to foretell what our Mashiach would accomplish in creation. And then he actually did it. But it proves the calendar, and if you follow out the calendar, it shows history before it happens, just like the creation account. He created in 1 through 6, and he rested on the 7th. History takes place the 1st through the 6,000th year, and then he has the millennial reign. So in the same way, his passion, the uh, he came on the 10th day of the, of the first month, which was the, the end of the week before. He was there for four days, including the, t the first and second day of the week, which have been day three and four. On Passover... He had been taken and brought before Pontius Pilate. We, I mean, we know everything that had happened, so I'm just abbreviating it. But he was taken before him. He was found innocent, but convicted as guilty. 
they maligned, disfigured, and then impaled the truth. And he was buried before sunset in a new sepulcher, right? And that was on the third day. The fourth day was just like when he came, preaching his death until he came. The fourth, fifth, and sixth, he was in the grave. And then he resurrected early dawn before the Sabbath. And he would be the truth returns before the millennial reign. All of these things help to help any believer to know the truth, to be able to speak it, to, to comprehend the things that are going on, and not be dismayed or led astray by every wind of doctrine, as they say. But back on point, this is all about this yom. And if you keep in mind what these things foretell and the accurate calendar, all of this fits really wonderfully. It's an it's amazing text. So here we go. This is how we ought to assemble together and to celebrate the festival day of our Deliverer's resurrection. On the day of the resurrection of Yahuwah, that is Yahuwah's day or yom, Assemble yourselves together without fail, giving thanks to El and praising Him for those loving kindnesses Elohim has bestowed upon you through Mashiach, and has delivered you from ignorance, error, and bondage, that your offering may be unspotted and acceptable to Eloah, who has said concerning his Yachad Kahal, or united into one assembly, in every place shall incense and a pure sacrifice be offered unto me. For I am a great king, says Yahuwah Shaddai, or Yahuwah Almighty, and my name is wonderful among the nations. Do you first ordain overseers worthy of Yahuwah, and elders and ministers, pious men, righteous, meek, free from the love of money, lovers of truth, approved, kadosh, or set apart, not acceptors of persons, who are able to teach the word of piety and rightly dividing the doctrines of Yahuwah, 2 Timothy 2.15. And honor such as your fathers, as your masters, as your benefactors, as the causes of your well-being. Reprove one another not in anger, but in mildness with loving kindness and shalom. Observe all things that are commanded you by Yahuwah. Be watchful for your life or your soul, your inner being. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning, and you like men who wait for their master when he will come, at evening or in the morning, or at cock crowing, or at midnight. You see, there's a distinction here between morning and cock crowing. This would be first light, and that would rain all the way until actual sunrise, which is, or the, the coming of the sun, if you will, more technically, which would be morning. And this is the last appointed time or change of state of the light that we are to praise our Creator in in a day, if you re recall, where it says in the Psalms, in seven times in a yom I will praise you, and those are actually el elucidated or made fully evident in the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Apostolic Constitutions, but just like as it's founded in creation, you had the day right? The light, the workings that he did, and then there was evening, and then there was morning, and that was the completion of the day, Yom Achad. So you have the morning, or the day, right? Begins in the morning. Then you have the third hour, which our Mashiach was convicted at, the sixth hour in which he was impaled, the ninth hour in which he gave up his Ruach, and then you have sunset, last light, and then first light, or, or cock crowing, if you will. And that is the seven times in a day, or the light period of creation, that we are enjoined to praise our Maker, which is literally every change of state, which is what He causes to be, because He is Yahuwah, He who causes it to be.
right? But he says, or at cock crowing, or at midnight, for at what hour they think not Yahuwah will come, and if they open to him, Ashrei, or prosperous, happy, confirmed, walking straight, strengthened, are those servants because they were found watching. For he will guard or gird himself and will make them sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. Luke 12, 35 through, and 37, Mark 13, 35. Watch therefore and pray that you do not sleep unto death, for your former pleasant deeds will not profit you, if at the last part of your life you go astray from the true amuna, amuna, which is belief, steadfast fidelity, trustworthiness, it's both faith and faithfulness, trust and trustworthiness, okay? For in the last days, false foretellers shall be multiplied, and such as corrupt the word, and the sheep shall be changed into wolves and love into hatred. For through the abounding of inequity, the love of many shall wax cold. For men shall hate and persecute and betray one another, and then shall appear the deceiver of the world, the enemy of the truth, the prince of lies. Now, if you remember that the last day started at the coming of our Mashiach, and the truth that you can see, in what, especially in what's made evident in the Antichrist for Dummies video series on YouTube, which I talk about all the time, they don't have everything 100% perfectly accurate, but the things that they share that you can test and prove for yourself are absolutely amazing. It shows what we've all been misled about in regard to Revelation and how it is actually meant to be comprehended. But if you keep that in mind, then all these things fit in line fairly well because after he came, this was being done both by those that profess to be believers and by others and then the coming of the anti-Mashiach actually happened, right? But it says, For men shall hate and persecute and betray one another, and then shall appear the deceiver of the world, the enemy of the truth, the prince of lies. Second Thessalonians 2. Whom Yahuwah Yahushua shall destroy with the ruach of his mouth, who takes away the wicked with his lips, and many shall be offended at him. But they that endure to the end, the same shall be delivered. And then shall appear the sign of the son of Adam in Shemaim, Yeshayahu 11.4, Matith Yahu 24. And afterwards shall be the voice of a trumpet by the chief messenger, which is mentioned by Shaul. And in that interval shall be the revival of those that sleep, or those that were asleep. And then shall Yahuwah come, and all his Kodeshim, or set-apart ones, with him, with a great concussion above the clouds, with the messengers of his power. And this is something that you see in Hanok chapter 1, verse 9. Also, you see it later on, I believe, in chapters in the 80s, where he has the vision of when the armies in the Shemaim are about are preparing themselves to descend. And he was stunned by it, right? So you have that one as well. Matith Yahu 16, 27. Yahuda, what they call Jude. Yahuda chapter 1, 14 through 15. And Revelation 19 and 20 up to verse 6. This is in the throne of his kingdom, or Malkuth, to condemn the adversary the deceiver of the world, and to render to everyone according to his deeds. Then shall the wicked go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous shall go into life eternal, Matith Yahu 25.46, to inherit those things which eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man, such things as El has prepared for them that love him. 1 Corinthians 2.9 <clears throat> And 
and they shall rejoice in the kingdom of El, which is in Mashiach, Yahushua. Since we are vouchsafed such great birach oath, or blessings, from him, let us become his supplicants and call upon him by continual prayer, and say, Our eternal Deliverer, the King of Elohim, who alone are Almighty and Yahuwah, the El of all inner beings or souls, and the El of our set-apart and perfect fathers, <clears throat> and of those before us, the El of Abraham and of Yitzhak and of Yaakov, who are merciful and compassionate, long-suffering and abundant in loving-kindness, to whom every heart is naked and by whom every heart is seen, and to whom every secret thought is revealed. To you do the inner beings of the righteous cry aloud, Upon you do the expectations of the Kodeshim, or set-apart ones, trust. You father of the perfect, you hearer of the supplications of those that call upon you with uprightness. You see, it doesn't say that those who call upon you with correct pronunciation, although knowing his name and calling on it is important. He, he hears the supplication of those that call upon him with uprightness. That's the key. Not coming to him with hypocrisy or double-mindedness or evil inclinations in your heart. Right? And who know the supplications that are not uttered. For your providence reaches as far as the inmost parts of mankind. And by your knowledge you search the thoughts of everyone. And in every region of the whole earth, the incense of prayer and supplication is sent up to you. You who have appointed this present world as a place of combat to righteousness, and have opened to all the gate of chesed, or loving kindness, and have demonstrated to every man by implanted knowledge and natural judgment, and the admonitions of the Torah, how the possession of riches is not everlasting, the ornament of beauty is not perpetual, our strength and force are easily dissolved, and that all is vapor and vanity, and that only the tov conscience of Amuna unfeigned passes through the midst of the Shemaim, and returning with truth takes hold of the right hand of the joy which is to come. And withal, before the promise of the restoration of all things is accomplished, the inner being itself exalts in expectation and is joyful. For from that truth which was in our forefather Abraham, when he changed his way, you guided him by a vision, and taught him what kind of state this world is. And knowledge went before his Amuna, and Amuna was the consequence of his knowledge. And the covenant did follow after his belief or trustworthiness. It was after he proved to be trustworthy and he was found right that the covenant of circumcision was given to him and his seed was produced. The promise was, was produced through him. But before that, it was not it was not able to be accomplished for him. Okay. For you said, I will make your seed as the stars of Shemaim, and as the sand which is by the seashore. Moreover, when you had given him Yitzach, and knew him to be like him in his mode of life, you were then called his El, saying, I will be an El to you, and to your seed after you. Bereshith, or Genesis 26.3 and when our father Yaakov was sent into Mesopotamia, you showed him Mashiach, and by him spoke, saying, Behold, I am with you, and I will increase you and multiply you exceedingly. 
Now, this is mentioning that the father showed the Mashiach to Yaakov and gave the quote of when Mashiach or when Yaakov had the vision of seeing Yahuwah at the top of the, the ladder or the stairs that was being ascended and descended, where he was being attended to by messengers, if you will, which is the very thing he foretold that Nathan would be able to see of him when he was walking in the flesh as well. So another instance of who he is being plainly shown. He was the Yahuwah whom Yaakov had seen and spoken to in the vision at Bethel, which you have plainly mentioned also in the book of Yobelim. It says, And so you spoke to Moshe, meaning the father spoke to Moshe through his son, Yahushua, who was called Yahuwah at the time. It says, And so you spoke to Moshe, your steadfast and set-apart servant, at the vision of the bush. I am he that is, Yahuwah. This is my name forever. This and my remembrance, memorial or masculinity, for generations of generations. And whenever I'm reading and you see where you have multiple definitions or multiple words like that, that's literally what these words mean. It has the inherent meaning of all of that, not just one. So his zakar, Yahuwah being his Shem zakar, is his, is his renowned manhood. And it's literally his name. So it means both. And this is from Shemot or Exodus 3, 14 and 15. You great protector of the posterity of Abraham, you are Baruch forever. You are Baruch Yahuwah, the king of ages, who by Mashiach have made the whole world, and by him in the beginning reduced into order the disordered parts, who divided the waters from the waters by a firmament and put into them a Ruach of life put into the waters a Ruach of life, which is why we're immersed and die with him in the waters and reborn. Okay? This is also mentioned in the recognitions of Clement. It says, Who fixed the earth and stretched out the Shemaim and disposed every creature by an accurate constitution. For by your power, Yahuwah, the world is beautified. The Shemaim is fixed as an arch over us, and is rendered illustrious with stars for our comfort in the darkness. Ha'or, the light, and Ha'shemesh, the sun, were begotten for days and the production of fruit, and the moon for the diversity of seasons, by its increase and diminutions, and the one was called night and the other day. Yet as for the sea itself, who can possibly describe it, which comes with fury from the ocean, yet runs back again, being stopped by the sand at your command? And here's another picture of one of those parables that you see. His children are supposed to be like the stars of the Shemaim, and the sand which is by the seashore. And if you know the sea, the sand, you have some of that sand is perpetually under the water. The seas foam over it continuously and it never sees the light of day. But some of that sand is at the borders where at one point it's covered, at others it is dry and it is exposed to the light and life and breath and all things. And then you have the other parts of the sand where it's the absolute border that the waters never cross. And all of these are pictures of how his children are in relation to other peoples of the world, which represent the waters, the sea, the peoples, nations, tribes, languages, and tongues. Okay? When they're all amalgamated together, it's like the waters of the ocean, which is death for man to drink. There's other pictures there too, but um, like the water of life coming down from above, it goes on the mountains into the streams and flows into the ocean. And while it's pure at first, and while going into the ground and coming up again, it's for the benefit and health of men. 
when it gets to the ocean, it becomes unprofitable, right? There's a lot of these things, and there's so many that you can't, you can, no man can ever discover them all. But to think about them is exactly what we're enjoined to do. So here we go. <clears throat> it says, For you have said, Thereby shall her waves be broken. Job 38.11 You have also made it capable of supporting little and great creatures, and made it navigable for ships. Then did the earth become green, and was planted with all sorts of flowers, and the variety of several trees, and the shining luminaries, the nourishers of those plants, preserve their unchangeable course, and in nothing depart from your command. Even so, where you bid them, there they do come and go for signs of the seasons and of the years, making a constant return of the work of men. And afterwards the kinds of the several animals were created, those belonging to the land, to the water, to the air, and both to air and water. And the handcrafted hokma of your providence does still impart to everyone a suitable providence. For as he was not unable to produce different kinds, so neither has he disdained to exercise a different providence towards every one. And at the conclusion of the creation, you gave direction to your hokma, and formed a reasonable creature as the citizen of the world, saying, Let us make man after our image and after our likeness. Bereshit 1.26 and have exhibited him as an ornament of the world, and formed him a body out of the four elements, those primary bodies, but had prepared a nephesh, or soul, inner being, out of nothing, and bestowed upon him his five senses, and set over his sensations a mind as the conductor of the inner being. All right. And I also recommend whenever I can the Healing Wings Ministries videos or the Eagles Wing Ministries videos and what it mentions about how scripture is literally true and our wrong thinking or our sinful behavior causes us to be in dis-ease and have health issues. So one of the things that are purported in there is that the mind and the soul or nephesh are synonymous, but that's not true. You can see here. The inner being is prepared from before your body was ever made. It was the, in the first day of creation, your soul and all the spirits that would ever exist was created by our creator. And then in time, when your body was made, your nephesh, which was made from nothing and is immortal, is put into the body. You can see that Yobelim and a few other places as well. But in the common scriptures, and you can look at this in a variety of places, when it talks about the life is in the blood, do not drink or do not eat the meat with the blood because the life is in the blood. And he's not going to hold you guiltless if you do. If you look at the Hebrew, that word is not the word for life, which is chai or chayim, but it's the word nefesh. It's literally the soul, your soul is in the blood. It is not your mind, but it permeates throughout the entire body. It carries the oxygen or the breath of life everywhere. The, the two go hand in hand together. It's a picture to teach men. So if you keep this in mind, that those videos are a great resource, but it does have that little error. Moving back here, this is just another wonderful segment, though, about how you can look at the how we're made in his image the body of a man the actual physical building of us and what these body parts represent and do and how it, it lines up with the truth right continuing though it says and besides all these things yahuwah elohim who can worthily declare the motion of the rainy clouds the shining of the lightning the noise of the thunder in order to the supply of proper food and the most agreeable temperature of the air. 
Yet when man was disobedient, you deprived him of the existence which should have been his reward. Even so, you did not destroy him forever, but laid him to sleep for a time, and you by oath called him to a resurrection and loosened the bond of death. You reviver of the dead through Yahushua Mashiach, who is our expectation. Greater you, Yahuwah Shaddai, and great is your power, and of your comprehension there is no number. Our Creator and Deliverer, rich in benefits, long-suffering, and the bestower of the chesed, or loving-kindness, who does not take away your deliverance from your people, or sorry, from your creatures. For you are good by nature, and spare sinners, and invite them to repentance, for admonition is the effect of your bowels of compassion. For how should we abide if we were required to come to judgment immediately, when after so much long suffering we hardly get clear of our miserable condition? The Shemayim declare your dominion, and the earth shakes with earthquakes, and hanging upon nothing declares your unshaken steadfastness. The sea raging with waves and feeding a flock of ten thousand creatures is bounded with sand, as standing in awe at your command, and compels all men to dry out. How great are your works, Yahuwah! In Chokmah have you made them all. So again, you think about what the sea does and how the, the shore is the boundary of it, and those standing at the sea, right, are compelled to dry out, or the waters. All of this is a picture here. And his children being like the sand of the seashore, they are the boundary keeper for what is of him and what is not, or what is uh, of death and what is not, if you can see that picture. The Eretz, or earth, is full of your creation, and the bright host of messengers and the intellectual spirits say to Palmoni, or Palmoni, the wonderful numberer, which is in Daniel chapter 7. It mentions that, that certain set-apart one said to another, how long until that word for that, that certain one, right, that was being talked to or that gave the reply, was called Palmone, which literally means paleo or pale, pale, right, is wonderful. And then numbering or numberer is monai. So the host of the messengers say to our Mashiach, who's the wonderful numberer, there is but one Kodesh being. And the Kodesh Seraphim, together with the six-winged cherubim, who sing to you their triumphal song, cry out with never-ceasing voices, Kadosh, 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 Yahuwah Elohim Zavaoth, Shemayim and earth are full of your esteem. Yeshayahu 6.3 And the other multitudes of the orders, messengers, chief messengers, thrones, dominions, principalities, authorities, and powers cry aloud and say, Baruch be Yahuwah of esteem out of his place. And remember, Yahuwah of esteem is a title, just like Palmoni, of our Mashiach, who is at the right hand of the Father, and all authority and esteem was given to him. All right? That's why he... It's our Mashiach that created all things by the will of his Father. It was made for him, by him, and through it, through him, and for him, is what the scriptures tell us. And after the millennial reign is when he will yield up all of this to his Father, who is the only true Elohim and supreme above all. But that's uh, one of the catch-ups, one of the hiccups that, especially with Simon the Magician and some people that they might have, is that a perfect creator wouldn't have mistakes in his creation, but they see a lot of evil. 
So they think that if there is a creator, he's weak or that there's he's not all powerful or he's not all knowing or there's some deficiency. But when we take what the word teaches in these matters, we learn that the father who is supreme and all powerful and there's nothing but perfection from him chose to do all things through his son who is not equal to his father, but there is no one in creation equal to him. And it is through him and for him that all things are and, and for their purposes, including, and he is the word, so how the word says reality works is what is supposed to be. All that being said, these things that we're reading line up exactly with the things that you can derive from scripture when you when you line them up like that. <clears throat> you just take it for what it says. This is yet Yisrael or Yasharal, right? Yisrael, your assembly on earth taken out of the nations, emulating the Shamayim powers night and day, with a full heart and a willing nefesh sings. The chariot of El is ten thousand full thousands of them that rejoice. Yahuwah is among them at Sinai, or in Sinai, in the Kodesh. If you look up this word, it doesn't just mean the mountain's name, but Sinai means erudite scholar, or a studious, a very thorough scholar. The Shemaim knows him who fixed it as stone in the form of an arch upon nothing, who united the land and water to one another, and scattered the vital air all abroad, and conjoined fire therewith for warmth and the comfort against darkness. The choir of stars strikes us with admiration, declaring him that numbers them and showing him that names them. The animals declare him that puts existence into them. The trees show him that makes them grow. All which things, or all which creatures, being made by your word, show forth the greatness of your power. Wherefore, every man ought to send up a hymn from his very soul or nefesh to you, through Mashiach, in the name of all the rest, since he meaning man, and the head of man is Mashiach, has power over them all by your appointment. Both man was given dominion over creation, and our Mashiach was given dominion over man by the appointment of the Father. For you are kind in your benefits and beneficent in your bowels of compassion, who alone are almighty. For when you will to be able is present with you, for your eternal power both quenches flame and stops the mouths of lions, and tames wells and raises up the sick, and overrules the power of all things, and overturns the host of enemies, and casts down a people numbered in their arrogance. You are he who are in Shemaim, he who are on earth, he who are in the sea, he who are in finite things, yourself unconfined by anything. For of your majesty there is no boundary. For it is not ours, Yahuwah, but the oracle of your servant, who said, And you shall know in your heart that Yahuwah, your Elohim, is, or he is El in Shemaim above and on earth beneath, and there is none other apart from you. Devarim or Deuteronomy 4.39 For there is no El apart from you alone. There is none Kodesh or set apart apart from you, Yahuwah. The El of knowledge, the El of the set apart ones, set apart above all set apart beings. For they are set apart by your hands. You are esteemed and highly exalted invisible by nature and unsearchable in your judgments, whose existence is without want, whose duration can never alter or fail, whose operation is without toil, whose greatness is unlimited, whose excellency is perpetual, whose habitation is inaccessible, 
whose dwelling is unchangeable, whose knowledge is without beginning, whose truth is immutable, whose work is without assistance, whose dominion cannot be taken away, whose monarchy is without succession, whose Malkuth or kingdom is without end, whose strength is irresistible, whose army is very numerous. For you are the father of Chokmah, or wisdom, the creator of the creation, by a mediator, as the cause, the bestower of providence, the giver of laws, the supplier of want, the punisher of the unrighteous, and the rewarder of the righteous, the Elan father of Mashiach, and the master of those that are pious towards him, whose promise is infallible, whose judgment without bribes, whose sentiments are immutable, whose piety is incessant, meaning ever there and present, right? Not to be ignored. Whose thanksgiving is everlasting, through whom adoration is worthily due to you from every rational and set apart nature. Yahuwah Shaddai, you have created the world by Mashiach and have appointed the Shabbat in memory thereof, because that on that day you have made us rest from our works for the meditation upon your instructions, or Torot. You have appointed festivals for the rejoicing of our inner beings, that we might come into the remembrance of that chokmah or wisdom which was created by you, how he submitted to be made of a woman on our account. He appeared in existence and demonstrated himself in his immersion. How he that appeared is both El and man. He suffered for us by your permission and died and rose again by your power, on which account we solemnly assemble to celebrate the feast of the resurrection on Yahuwah's day, which again he said he was master of the Sabbath. And rejoice on account of him who has conquered death and has brought Chaim, or life and immortality to light. For by him you have brought home the nations to yourself for a peculiar people, the true Yisrael, beloved of El, and seen Elohim. For you, Yahuwah, brought our fathers out of the land of Mitzrayim, and delivered them out of the iron furnace and from clay and brick-making, and redeemed them out of the hands of Pharaoh and of those under him, and led them through the sea as through dry land, and bore their manners in the wilderness and bestowed on them all sorts of tov things, or good, pleasant things. You gave them the instructions, or Ten Commandments, the Debarim, right? which was pronounced by your voice and written with your hand. You enjoined the observation of the Shabbat, not affording them an occasion of idleness, but an opportunity of righteousness, for their knowledge of your power and the prohibition of evils, having limited them as within a set-apart circuit for the sake of doctrine for the rejoicing upon the seventh period. And again, these limits and everything is to have a rehearsal of the millennial reign, which is what the Shabbat is supposed to be about. On this account was there appointed one week, and seven weeks, and the seventh month, and the seventh year, and the revolution of these, the Yobel, which is the fiftieth year for remission that men might have no occasion to pretend ignorance. On this account, he permitted men every Sabbath to rest, so that so no one might be willing to send one word out of his mouth in anger on the day of the Sabbath. 
no kindling fires. For the Sabbath is the ceasing of the creation, the completion of the world, the inquiry after Torot, or instructions, and the grateful praise to Eloah for the Baraka, or blessing, he has bestowed upon men. Now, just one more real quick. The idea that you don't open your mouth in anger and how that's related to kindling a fire. It says in Yaakov that the tongue is a fire, the world of unrighteousness, and by it a whole fire or a fire is kindled and whole forests are burned and consumed. There's a direct correlation between fire and your words right there. And this is how you use the scriptures to interpret the scriptures for the parables that they mean. He does this throughout his word, and you can always find the meaning of something as explained with multiple witnesses, either in the context of the story of, of a narrative playing out or plainly spoken in a parable and given to us. You can find these things. It's it's in the hidden writings, in the common writings, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, pretty much everywhere you look, you can find the, the patterns for these and how it works out. And it's because of that, it's because of the fact that you have the same consistent pattern of parables within parables for how to comprehend what is true. And you have it not just from what we call the Bible, but you have it in the hidden writings. You have it in the, the ones that were collected together in the Apocrypha and the ones that were in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and the other stragglers like the book of the Gad the Seer, or the Shepherd of Hermas, the writings of Clement, and the Apostolic Constitutions, the Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs. You have all these different things that have one voice and tell you the same message, and you get the pattern and the explanation throughout them. So it all goes together and if you take the time, the more you look at it, the more you'll see. But if you don't look, if you don't see these things and study it for yourself to be approved, you're never going to know for sure. And if you don't have a firm foundation, you're you're not going to you're going to be tossed about by every wind of doctrine, like he said. This is all which Yahuwah's day excels. I mean, all this right, and shows the mediator. Yahushua, Yahuwah, Yahushua, right? The only mediator between the Father and men. The Sabbath shows the mediator himself, the provider, the lawgiver, the cause of the resurrection. Our Mashiach says, I am the resurrection and the life, right? The firstborn of the whole creation, the, the first begotten, right? El, the word and man who was born of Miriam alone without a man who lived set apart, who was impelled under Pontius Pilatus and died and rose again from the dead. So that Yahuwah's day commands us to offer unto you, Yahuwah, thanksgiving for all. For this is the favor afforded by you, which on account of its greatness has obscured all other birachoth or blessings. You who has fulfilled your promises made by the foretellers and has had loving kindness on Zion and compassion on Yerushalayim by exalting the throne of Dawid, your servant in the midst of her, by the birth of Mashiach, who was born of his seed according to the flesh of the virgin alone. Do you now, Yahuwah Elohim, Except the prayers which proceed from the lips of your peoples, which are of the nations, which call upon you in truth, as you accepted of the gifts of the righteous in their generations. In the first place, you respected the sacrifice of Avel, or Havel, Abel, Bereshith, or Genesis chapter 4 and accept it as you accepted of the sacrifice of Noah when he went out of the ark. Bereshit, or Genesis, chapter 8. Of Abraham, or Abraham, when he went out of the land of the Kazdim, Bereshit 12. Of Yitzach at the well of the oath, 
or what they call Beersheba, right? Of Yaakov in Bethel, of Moshe in the desert, of Aharon between the dead and the living, Numbers chapter 16, of Yahushua the son of Nun in Gilgal, Yahushua chapter 5, of Gideon at the rock and the fleeces before his sin, of Manoach and his wife in the field, of Shamshun or Samson in his thirst before the transgression. If you're not familiar, when before Samson had sinned with Delilah, he was going around doing things as judge over the people, and after an exploit, he was famished with thirst, and he prayed for Yahuwah to help him, and he was given waters in a miracle to drink and quench his thirst. Of Yepheth or Yefta, yeah, Yefta, sorry, Yefta, in the war before his rash vow. Of Barak and Deborah in the days of Sisera, of Shemuel in Mitzvah, First Samuel eight, of David in the threshing floor of Oranan the Yebusite, of Shalomo in Gibeon and in Yerushalayim. The two times our Mashiach appeared, when Yahuwah appeared to the son of Dawid and, and spoke to him, right? And heard his prayers. Of Eliyahu in Mount Carmel, 1 Kings chapter 18. Of Elisha at the barren fountain, 2 Kings 2. Of Yahushaphat in war. Of Hezkiyahu in his sickness and concerning Sennacherib. Which... Here's another example in the common scriptures of things being out of order, because there's quite a few. The chronologies, especially in Daniel, Ezekiel, in parts of the Judges, and right here in Kings, you have the events of Hezekiah's life that are mixed up. He got sick and, and petitioned our Maker and was given extended life, 15 years of life, before Sennacherib came. And it was after Sennacherib came, when he knew he still had life in him, that he prayed and petitioned our Maker, and the messenger came and miraculously delivered the inhabitants of Yerushalayim from the Assyrian armies that were attacking him. Okay. Of Manasseh in the land of the Kazdim, after his transgression, Second Chronicles 33, of Yoash Yahu in Pesach, or Passover, of Ezra at the return, Ezra chapter 8, of Daniel in the den of lions, of Yonah in the whale's belly, of the three children in the fiery furnace, of Hanan, Hanan or Hananyahu in the tabernacle before the ark, or Hannah, sorry, not Hananyahu, but Hannah was the daughter of, or the mother of Shemuel. Right? This is 1 Samuel chapter 1. Of Nehemiahu at the rebuilding of the walls, of Zerubbabel, of Matith Yahu and his sons in their zeal, meaning of the Maccabees, right there, as people that were accepted by our Creator. And that's for anyone who likes to say that the Maccabees were a, a heretical sect. There's some perversions in the history here because it was removed and it was removed for a purpose. The same reason why the history is muddied up for what the children did in the wilderness before they're being brought into the land is the exact same reason why you have history muddied up in <laughs> the uh, time of the Maccabees leading up to the advent of the truth in the world and the coming of our Mashiach. And it's the same reason why History and things are muddied up right now, and you have a lot of deception and error going on because they don't want these things being clearly perceived about what's going on right now. But of Yael in Birakoth. Now also do you receive the prayers of your people or tribes which are offered to you with knowledge through Mashiach in the Ruach. So, offer to you with knowledge, through the word, 
in the right Ruach. So in his Ruach, meaning you have, if you remember the Shepherd of Hermas, you have the names of the virgins and his name with you as character traits that you emulate. You can't be a liar or thinking evil in your in your heart and say that you have his Ruach in you because he is love, right? We give you thanks for all things, Yahuwah Shaddai, that you have not taken away your loving kindness and your compassions from us, but in every succeeding generation you do save and deliver and assist and protect. For you assisted in the days of Enosh and Hanok, in the days of Moshe and Yahushua, and in the days of the judges, in the days of Shemuel and of Eliyahu and of the foretellers, in the days of Dawid and of the, the Malachim, or the kings. Malachim, with an E, Melech, right? Melachim is kings. Malachim, Mal, M-A-L, Malachim, Malachim, right, is messengers. Very similar, but not exactly the same. One has an aleph in the word and one does not. In modern Hebrew quickly, or, uh, comprehension, if you will, melech for king is a segalate noun, as they call it, and the vowel points under both the, the vowel or the consonants is a segol or the E-class vowel. So it's two segols together. Melech, derek, things like that are what they call a segolate noun. But now you know. Moving on. In the days of Esther and Mordecai, and in the days of Yahudith, or what they call Judith, Judith, sorry, from the Apocrypha, and this word right here, Yahudith, is the actual word in Hebrew that is the name for the language that the Yahudim speak. When it calls it the language of the Jews in mo most English translations, that word for language of the Jews is Yahudith. Or it's literally of those who would praise, confess, and acknowledge Hudith Yahuwah, right? Who do is to confess, acknowledge, and praise. And Yah, right, is the one that they're doing that for. Now I praise Yahuwah, therefore I call his name Yahuda, is what we're told in Bereshit or Genesis at his naming. And that's exactly what he's called for that reason. That's the picture. As you can see in the people that were called Yahuda, they're the ones that acknowledge, confess, and, and praise him. And the others were not, but they're the ones that strove with Elohim and men and have overcome. So... It says, and in the days of Yahuda Maccabee and his brethren, and in our days you have assisted us by your great high Kohen, Yahushua Mashiach, your son. For he has delivered us from the sword, and has freed us from famine, and sustained us, has delivered us from sickness, has preserved us from an evil tongue. For all which things we do give you thanks through Mashiach, who has given us an articulate voice to confess with all, and added to it a suitable tongue as an instrument to modulate with all, and a proper taste, and a suitable touch, and a sight for contemplation, and the hearing of sounds, and the smelling of vapors, and the hands for work, and feet for walking. And you form all these members from a little drop in the womb, and after the formation, you bestow on it an immortal inner being and produce it into the light as a rational creature, even man. You have instructed him by your instructions, or Torot, improved him by your statutes, and when you bring on a dissolution for a while, you have promised a resurrection. Wherefore, what life is sufficient? And what length of ages will be long enough for men to be thankful? 
To do it worthily it is impossible, but to do it according to our ability is righteous or just and right. For you have delivered us from the impiety of polytheism and from the heresy of the murderers of Mashiach. You have delivered us from error and ignorance. You have sent Mashiach among men as a man, being the only begotten El. You have made the Comforter to inhabit among us. You have set messengers over us. You have put the devil to shame. You have brought us into being when we were not. You take care of us when made. You measure out life to us. You afford us food. You have promised repentance. Esteem and worship be to you for all these things through Yahushua Mashiach, now and ever, and through all ages. Amen. Meditate on these things, brethren, and Yahuwah Amakam, or Yahuwah, be with you, upon earth and in the kingdom of his Father, who both sent him and has delivered us by him from the bondage of corruption into his splendorous liberty, Romans 8.21, and has promised Chaim, life, to those who through him have believed in the El of the whole world. And real quick, it says there's a footnote, the part that was marked with two asterisks that talked about a stone, like an arch. It really said a cube of stone. And there's nowhere anywhere in any other reference that there's mentioned as a cube for the firmament in any regard, whatever. But there is a cube in Kabbalah and in Freemasonry, um, and in occultic circles, and that might have been an issue that that was added in. So the cube is not mentioned in the text up there, but I put it in a footnote. It is an arch like a stone because it is a solid structure, and it is also called like terrible ice and crystal in its description. But aside from that, um, and you can read this here, that was everything that we had to share, Ab willing. It is edifying for you, and we all learn and continue to grow in the truth. Please feel free to ask questions and comments if you have any, and you all have a wonderful Shabbat and a Shavua Tov, the, a good week ahead. Shalom. All right, here's a little postscript, everyone. Sorry about that. We We had tried to find this the other week, or a few weeks ago, when we were talking with the group here, and... Uh, just now came across it again, so I wanted to share. But this is a section from First Clement to the Corinthians, and it's about the expectation of the age to come, right? Just something to think about, and it's what I. This is something I shared on Facebook in 2016. But it's chapter 16, or I'm sorry, 17, from First Clement to the Corinthians. How Baruch and wonderful, beloved, are the gifts of Elohim. Life in immortality, brightness in righteousness, truth in full assurance, amuna or belief in confidence, temperance in set-apartness. And all this has Elohim subjected to our understanding or comprehension. What therefore shall those things be which he has prepared for them that wait for him? The Creator and Father of spirits, or Ruachoth, the Most Kadosh, He only knows both the greatness and beauty of them. Let us therefore strive with all earnestness that we may be found in the number of those that wait for Him, that so we may receive the reward which He has promised. But how, beloved, shall we do this? We must fix our minds by belief towards Elohim, and seek those things that are pleasing and acceptable unto Him. We must act conformably to His set-apart desire, and follow the way of truth, casting off from us all unrighteousness and inequity, together with all covetedness, strife, evil manners, deceit, whispering, detractions, all hatred of Eloah, pride and boasting, 
vainglory, and ambition. For they that do these things are odious to Elohim, and not only they that do them, but also all such as approve of those that do them. For thus says the scripture, But unto the wicked Elohim said, What have you to do to declare my statute, or that you should take my covenant in your mouth? seeing that you hated instruction and casted my words behind you. When you saw a thief, then you consented with him, and have been partaker with adulterers. You give your mouth to evil, and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done, and I kept silent, or silence, you thought I was altogether such a one as yourself, but I will reprove you and set them in order before your eyes. Now consider this, you that forget Eloah, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. Whoso offers praise esteems me, and to him that disposes his way aright will I show the deliverance of Elohim. This is the way, beloved, in which we may find our Deliverer, even Yahushua Mashiach, the Kohen Hagadol, or High Kohen of all our offerings, the Defender and Helper of our weakness. By Him, Yahushua, we look up to the highest Shemaim and behold as in a glass His spotless and most ex excellent visage. By him are the eyes of our hearts opened. By him our foolish and darkened comprehension rejoices to behold his wonderful light. By him would Elohim have us to taste the knowledge of immortality. He's the word, right? Who being the brightness of his esteem is by so much greater than the messengers as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they, meaning the name of Yahuwah. For so it is written, Who makes his messengers ruachoth and his ministers a flame of fire? But to the son thus says Yahuwah, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will take you, or and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the utmost parts of the earth for your possession. Psalm 2. And again he says unto him, Sit you on my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool. Psalm 110. But who are his enemies, even the wicked, and such who oppose their wills to the desire of Elohim? Let us therefore march on men and brethren with all earnestness in his set-apart instructions, let us consider those who fight under our earthly governors, how orderly, how readily, and with what exact obedience they perform those things that are commanded them. All are not generals, nor colonels, nor captains, nor inferior officers, but every one in his respective rank does what is commanded him by the king and those who have the authority over him. They who are great cannot subsist without those that are little, nor the little without the great. But there must be a mixture in all things, and then there will be use and profit too. Let us, for example, take our body. The head without the feet is nothing, neither the feet without the head. And even the smallest members of our body are yet both necessary and useful to the whole body. But all conspire together and are subject to one common use, namely the preservation of the whole body. Let us therefore, or sorry, let therefore our whole body be delivered in Mashiach Yahushua, and let everyone be subject to his neighbor according to the order in which he is placed in the gift, or by the gift of Elohim. Let not the strong man despise the weak, and let the weak see that he fears or reverences the strong. Let the rich man distribute to the necessity of the poor, 
And let the poor Barak Elohim that he has given one unto him by whom his want may be supplied. Let the prudent man show forth his prudence not in words, but in good works. Let him that is humble not bear witness to himself, but let him leave it to another to bear witness of him. Let him that is pure in the flesh not grow proud of it, knowing that it was from another that he received the gift of continuance, meaning let not the one who's been pure and chaste and not done not like a Nazarite who's kept his vows, let him not grow proud knowing that it's from our Creator, the gift to be able to accomplish this, and it should make him humble. Let us consider, therefore, brethren, whereof we are made, who and what kind of men we came into the world, as it were out of the sepulchre and from outer darkness. He that made us and formed us brought us into his own world, having presented us with his benefits even before we were born. Wherefore, having received all these things from him, we ought in everything to give thanks unto him, to whom be esteemed forever and ever. Amen. And with that, you all have a wonderful week and a wonderful Shabbat. See you next time.